Great, so let's listen to Florence and the Machine, You've Got the Love. Uh, Eco Warrior Princess, Creeperty listened to, or uh, Creeperty gifted you the subscription, so there you go. Um, yeah, Florence and the Machine, You've Got the Love, live. Ooh, with an orchestra. got one of those voices that the second it starts you're just like whoa like there was no ramping up or anything the second she opened her mouth to sing that was just pure raw energy i want to see if we can just ha experience that moment maybe just skip back forward once it's over but just make sure yeah so let's just pure composure pure in the moment yeah like you guys said
Yeah, we listened to Jenny of Old Stones. We talked a little bit about her singing. I I miss I actually miss uh I mischaracterized. I miss I misdefined her voice. I call I said it was a wobble what she's doing. A wobble is a slow vibrato. I I listened back to it and I was like, I'm such an idiot. But what she's doing is a it's a flutter, which is just a, a vibrato that's faster than the standard uh natural healthy vibrato. But what what's happening vocally that she does now that we're getting into it, the ends of her lines uh is the, it's how she depressurizes. We talked about earlier with some of floor singing how you depressure the end of lines to get into, to, to reset the voice for the next time you have to sing for the next onset. Now she has these really straight tone, compressed, very relaxed vocal onsets. She trained as an opera singer, so she understands you know how to balance out uh, the voice with breath pressure. What she's doing is basically really incredibly pressurizing uh, with her air. She's impre- pressurizing a lot with her air allowing her larynx to be very low. Now, whether that's a depression or a relaxation, it's somewhere in between. It's not a pull down because it's not a very compressed sound, but her larynx is very flat, right? And and it's creating that straight tone. That straight tone is a result of the voice just being pressed up by the air pressure in a very balanced way. It's not, it's not shaking or anything. Now, when she reduces the amount of pressure in the vocal folds, we get that faster fluttery vibrato. It's still an even flutter. So it's nothing, it's not an uneven vibrato. It's something she's doing consciously, but she's depressurizing the voice by relaxing, by relaxing the actual vocal muscles, not by relaxing the air. And that's why we get that flutter. More air is traveling through and the voice is vibrating. The vibrato is faster than we would have it if both the air and the vocal folds were, were evenly vibrating together. And that's from her coming off of those highly pressurized straight tone notes. Hope that makes sense. Uh, but that's, that whole idea you know, coming into the interpretive aspect of things is when she opens her mouth for the first time, you hear that resonant, deep, rich sound. It's that straight tone. It's that powerful body sound, which is that incredibly, you know, pressurized voice, right? Yeah, I, I mean, you could call it register shifts. It, it's, she's not really changing registers. She's changing the way that her folds are being used. Uh, I would say in general, it's all of it's kind of in a mixed place for the for this um, more chest usage in that straight tone sound because it's requiring the full vocal fold to be elongated and pressurized. Whereas with the flutter, you'll hear more closure for, you know, the sound is just the full closure thousands of times per second, hundreds of times per second, thousands of times per second, whatever the pitch is. Um so more full closure is happening with the straight tone sound than with the vibrato sound because we're not getting as much. So, um, it, but all in all, it does sound like a pretty mixed phonation, more chest dominant, I would say overall. You know, I, I had a conversation with someone about you know what is, what does this all mean using these these terms? You know, it it doesn't really matter because everyone does it slightly differently. Um, yeah, Capriani. Gabriani's back. <laughs> what a legend. Screw duty. Screw duty. Um, the 50s and 60s, more like Doris Day. Um, yeah, when they end the phrases with that flutter, uh, the flutter, that faster vibrato. It's it's from a more an idea that you can use more of the voice in a controlled way rather than having to sing with the full voice at all times, which is standard for operatic singing. Cabriani's in Hawaii. I am curious too, actually. What are you doing in Hawaii? You got the love. You got the love. You got the love. I love when that harmonizes with what's going on. That was perfect. Um, <laughs> she keeps those chords really. And notice that she's a very like tall, slender person. And notice how her her voice is kind of her her larynx is kind of forward, and and that allows her to kind of ease in the you know the voice literally when you're stretching it out to get to that 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 tilted position that she's singing in, it literally moves slight ever so slightly forward, ever so slightly forward and down, and she's just sitting on it and she's letting her air do the work. You saw that big breath she took at the beginning. It's a big breath for such a slender person, which is what she uses to compress. And not damage the voice because she's not under breathing by any means. And none of this is really unhealthy at all. Um, <laughs> greetings from Greenland. So Capriani's not in Hawaii. What is Hawaii? <laughs> anyway. Uh, 
five foot eight. Okay, so she's not that tall, but she's slender, and so her build, her her build, you know, she gives the illusion of being tall. I guess uh, five foot eight's not short though. She has that slender, tall build, which allows, and she needs to fill up that cavity with air. You know, the voice is still proportional to the body. The the voice, I should say, the way you use your voice is affected by the proportions of your body. So if she were six foot or five eight or five four, whatever, the proportions that she has is relates to how she's able to take in air and use air, right? Um Yeah, in some countries that's tall. Not in the Netherlands by any means. <laughs> um Wither, get out of here. <laughs> Whoever stripped of this performance was just bringing up the volume thing. So let's talk about that little moment. We got that. That's what happens when you get that like really pressurized sound and just it's vibrating from the overpressurization. Uh, that's that like big flutter. When when I'm trying to sing healthily and my voice is like swollen like if I were sick, I get a lot of that because I, I end up compensating with too much breath pressure or trying to compensate. Um, yeah. I love watching what she does when she, you know, she her sound changes as she adjusts the the shape of her vocal path. You know, that's something so like sacrilegious in classical singing technique, whether that's opera or whatever you're learning. But she does such a great job, and there are lots of other singing like Aurora does a similar thing. the The shape of the track that she adjusts through how she's standing is freaking unbelievable. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Capriani, thank you so much. For the subscription, Kamiva subscribe for two months in a row from the gifted sub. That's exciting, uh, guys. If you got a subscription, please thank Capriani for me. Five community subs. Thank you very much. Um, but notice how she how the sound changes as she adjusts the angles. That's that's her. That's part of her her color palette as a singer. Stabilizer muscles, right? Not good for operatic singing. We're not singing opera here. Stabilizer muscles, keeping that larynx low so that she can sustain that really pressurized but really lovely sound. Guys, if you get my girlfriend to throw a banana at me while we're streaming, clip it. I 
love her voice so much. I love she she makes that song her own song when she like eh, her voice is so unique. She's like Floor in that the second the mouth opens and the sound starts, like it, you know who's singing and it means something incredibly special. Dude, I can't believe you missed Charlie's last stream. Who? You know the big brain singer guy. Big brain. Sounds like he's overcompensating for something. Yeah, probably. But either way, check out the reaction I just sent you. Oh, gnarly, dude. Also, make sure to subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss a single reaction in the future. And if you support him on Patreon, he'll make sure that one of your requests gets guaranteed to be put up on YouTube that month. Dang, these Monday and Wednesday Twitch streams are lit. Yeah, and every Friday, he literally teaches free voice lessons on his Twitch stream through the Big Brain Singer Discord server. Dude, I'm there.